covered today. Introduction to Computer Personal Computing Landscape Personal Computer Desktop Laptop Netbooks and Tablets Handheld Computers Workstation Server Mainframe Supercomputer Wearable Computer Definition of Computer An electronic device designed to manipulate data so that useful information can be generated. A programmable usually electronic device that can store, retrieve, and process data. Types of Computer the all-powerful personal computer. The personal computer PC defines a computer designed for general use by a single person. While an iMac is definitely a PC, most people relate the acronym to computers that run on the Windows operating system instead. PCs were first known as microcomputers because they were complete computers but built on a smaller scale than the huge systems in use by most businesses. Desktop Computer until the middle of the 1980s, consumers had one choice for a PC, and it was the desktop format. Equipped with large CRT cathode ray tube monitors, they crowded your home workspace or the office. The expectation with desktop systems were that you would set the computer up in a permanent location. Most desktops offer more power, storage and versatility for less cost than their portable brethren, which was what made them the go-to computer in the 1990s when laptops were still thousands of dollars. A desktop computer is made up of several basic parts, and in this video we're going to show you what these parts are and what they're used for. The computer case contains the main components of the computer. This is where the actual processing happens. Today, most cases are tower cases, which means they stand up vertically. Sometimes you may see a horizontal case, which is often called a desktop case. In order to view anything on your computer, you'll need to have a monitor. The monitor connects to the video card inside your computer to display images and text on the screen. Most monitors have LCD or LED displays, which can be made very thin so they don't use much desk space. To save even more space, you can buy an all-in-one computer, which combines the monitor and the computer case into a single unit. To interact with your computer, you'll need a keyboard and mouse. Keyboards come in different shapes and sizes, for example, ergonomic and wireless keyboards. The mouse is used to control the mouse pointer on the screen. It can either be optical, which has an electrical eye on the bottom, or mechanical, which uses a rolling ball to detect movement. Some people prefer to use a trackball or touchpad instead of a mouse. These use less desk space since they don't need to move around when you're using them. So those are the basic parts of a desktop computer. As you can see, each part plays an important role, and you'll become very familiar with these parts as you gain more experience with your computer. Laptop Computer Laptops are portable computers that integrate the display, keyboard, a pointing device or trackball processor, memory and hard drive all in a battery-operated package slightly larger than an average hardcover book. If you're thinking of buying a computer, you may have wondered, is a laptop right for me? Depending on how you plan to use it, the answer may be yes. In this video, we'll look at some of the ways that a laptop is different from a desktop to help you decide. The biggest difference is portability. Laptops have to be small and light so that you can pick them up and take them with you. Since all of the basic parts are built in, setting up a laptop is as easy as opening it. The downside is that the monitor is usually smaller than a desktop monitor, so you'll have less screen space. Another important difference is that laptops use a battery. The battery can provide power to the laptop when you're on the go, 
and it will recharge whenever it's plugged in. An added benefit of having a battery is if the power goes out, the battery can work as a backup power source. Instead of a mouse, laptops usually have a built-in touchpad, also known as a trackpad. You can control the pointer on the screen by using a drawing motion with your finger. If you haven't used a touchpad before, the experience is a little bit different from using a mouse, and it may take a while to get used to. If you're buying a desktop computer, you can mix and match almost any monitor, keyboard, and mouse that you want. With a laptop, you won't have quite as much freedom since everything is built in. However, if you want to have the best of both worlds, you can use your laptop's ports to connect a separate monitor, keyboard, and mouse, basically turning your laptop into a desktop. And of course, whenever you want to, you can simply disconnect everything and take your laptop with you. As you can see, there are some important differences between laptops and desktops, so depending on your preferences, you can decide which one best suits your needs. Netbooks Netbooks are ultra-portable computers that are even smaller than traditional laptops. The extreme cost-effectiveness of netbooks means they're cheaper than almost any brand new laptop. However, netbooks' internal components are less powerful than those in regular laptops. Netbooks are compact, lightweight, and great value for money. The ideal way to stay in touch on the move without carrying the size and weight of a normal laptop. You can surf the internet, and because they connect wirelessly, they are ideal for travel, great for school, basically anywhere you can get a connection. You can do all the basic things with a netbook that you'd usually do, like surfing the web, receiving and sending emails, or creating simple documents. The battery lasts for much longer than a normal laptop. Six to eight hours battery life is common, depending on what you're doing. Tablet. Tablets are thin, flat devices that look like larger versions of smartphones. They were first manufactured in 2000 by Lenovo, but popularized by Apple in 2010 with the release of its iPad source. Or, tablets can do pretty much all the functions that laptops do, but don't have the internal fans that PCs have. So they have to rely on lower performing processors that won't use as much heat or battery power. Handheld computers Handheld computers like smartphones and PDAs are one of our era's iconic devices. Smartphones like the iPhone and Samsung Galaxy blend calling features and PDA functionality along with full-blown computer capabilities that get more jaw-dropping by the day. They feature touchscreen interfaces, high-speed processors, many gigabytes of memory, complete connectivity options including Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and more, dual-lens cameras, high-quality audio systems, and other features that would startle electronics engineers from half a century ago. If you look at a modern cell phone, they're actually pretty boring. They're just a slab of glass. In the beginning, none of that existed. You had to figure out how to do a keyboard, how to type stuff on it, how to talk to it. Workstation A workstation is simply a desktop computer that has a more powerful processor, additional memory, high-end graphics adapters and enhanced capabilities for performing a special group of tasks such as 3D graphics or game development. A workstation is a computer dedicated to a user or a group of users engaged in business or professional work. 
It includes one or more high-resolution displays and a faster processor than a personal computer. A workstation also has greater multitasking capability because of additional random access memory, drives and drive capacity. A workstation may also have a higher speed graphics adapters and more connected peripheral. The term workstation also has been used to reference a PC or mainframe terminal on a local area network. These workstations may share network resources with one or more large client computers and network servers. The future of data and analytics Techopedia explains workstation. Workstations usually are built with an optimized design for complex data manipulation and visualization. Examples include image rendering and editing, computer-aided design, animations and mathematical plots. Workstations were the first industry segment to market collaboration tools and advanced accessories and enhancements. These include 3D mice, multiple displays and high-performance capacity data storage devices. Eventually, mainstream PCs adopted workstation elements contributing to the decline of the workstation market segment. Additionally, the cost differential decreased between lower-end workstations and higher-end PCs. Low-end workstations used Intel Pentium 4 or AMD F164 CPUs, whereas high-end PCs used powerful processors such as the Intel Xeon, IBM Power, AMD, Operon or Sun Ultra Spark, a powerhouse for computer processing work. These latter machines are sometimes referred to as workstation class PCs and include features such as Error correcting code memory support Additional memory sockets for registered modules Multiple processor sockets for more powerful CPUs Multiple displays Reliable operating systems with advanced features High performance graphics cards Currently, Sun Microsystems manufactures the only workstations which use x86-64 microprocessors and Windows, Mac OS X, Solaris 10 and Linux distributed operating systems. Server A computer that has been optimized to provide services to other computers over a network, servers usually have powerful processors, lots of memory and large hard drives. What is a server? So that is the topic of this video. Now a server is basically a dedicated computer that provides services on behalf of clients, such as ordinary desktop computers or workstations. So it's a centralized machine where multiple clients connect to, either over the internet or in a local area network, and they connect to a server for a specific service. So for example, that service could be to retrieve a website, to access data or email and so on. Now a server could be dedicated to handle one of these services only, where you would have one server dedicated for a website, one server for data storage, and a server for email. And this model is what larger organizations use. Or you can also set up a server to handle each of these services on the same machine which is what typically happens in smaller organizations. So depending upon which setup is used, it all depends on the needs of an organization. Now when people talk about a server, generally they are referring to a powerful centralized computer that clients connect to over a network, and they would be correct on that. However, a server is not just a physical computer. A server is actually a role that a computer takes. Because any ordinary desktop computer can be set up as a server, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a powerful computer. So for example, you can set up a network in your home where you can have an ordinary desktop computer serve as a file server. The computer will have those files in a shared folder, and then other computers can connect to it to access those files. Or you can also use a desktop computer to serve as a web server, where you would install the website data on that computer and then the other computers can connect to it and retrieve the web page. Mainframe. Mainframes were huge computers that could fill an entire room or even a whole floor. As the size of computers has diminished while their power has increased, the term mainframe has fallen out of use in favor of enterprise server. You'll still hear the term mentioned though, particularly in large companies to describe the huge machines processing millions of transactions every day while simultaneously working to fulfill the needs of hundreds, if not thousands of individual user. Supercomputer. This type of computer usually costs hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars. 
Although some supercomputers are single computer systems, most are composed of multiple high-performance computers working in parallel as a single system. The best-known supercomputers are built by Cray Supercomputers. Today's supercomputers are comprised of thousands of connected processors, and their speed has grown exponentially over the past few decades. The first supercomputer, released in 1964, was called the CDC 6600. It used a single processor to achieve 3 million calculations per second. While that may sound impressive, it is tens of thousands of times slower than an iPhone. If you have a smartphone, it is more powerful than the supercomputer that we had back in 1995 doing human genome. Today, Summit consists of over 36,000 processors from IBM and NVIDIA that can perform 200 quadrillion calculations per second. What a typical computer will do in 30 years, this machine will do in an hour. Summit takes up 5,600 square feet of floor space and has nearly 200 miles of cable. It uses 4,000 gallons of water per minute to stay cool and consumes enough power to run 8,000 homes. But why do we need such fast computers? It has tangible results in terms of how it helps society at large. It will translate into better appliances, better security systems, better delivery of power, more efficient homes, every aspect of life, it'll change. Wearable computer, the latest trend in computing is wearable computers. Essentially, common computer applications, email, database, multimedia, calendar, scheduler, are integrated into watches, cell phones, visors, and even clothing. Many other wearables target outdoors enthusiasts and fitness freaks, allowing them to track their location, altitude, calories burned, steps, speed, and much, much more. Humans are two builders. Oftentimes when we find one task to be inefficient and repetitive, we will invest our time in developing something that can make the job easier or more efficient. This mindset is one of the reasons our technology has advanced as far as it has since the Stone Age. The computer is now placed in a mobile phone and almost useless without the internet and applications. Within the past five years, tablet computers have become commonplace in many households. As a result, many schools have taken to giving students tablets and changing the way they teach. Now, the hype about the next big thing seems to be wearable technology, or wearables, smart watches, smart glasses, health monitoring wristbands and other devices yet to be created that users wear on their body. Wearables or body-borne computers, these are nothing but small computing devices, nowadays usually electronic, that are worn under, with, or on top of clothing, 